fall for another gospel 1 colon 1 5 Paul clearly states the gospel of Christ. 1 colon 6 10 If anyone preaches a gospel other than Paul's let him be accursed. 1 colon 11 24 Paul defends his separate, distinct apostolic ministry from Christ. Rome. Three taverns. Forum of Appius. Tyrrhenian. C. Citrus Minor. Paul spends two years preaching the gospel as he awaits his appeal to Nero. Pudiol Pompili. City. Sicily. Malta. Messanal. Italia. Regium. Syracuse. Paul's missionary. Journeys. Paul's first. Missionary journey. Paul's voyage to Rome. Paul's second. Missionary journey. Paul's third. Missionary journey. Illyricum. Adriatic Sea. Brundisium, Tarentum, Ship Lost in Storm, Certus Major, 0100, Macedonia, Olympia, Luke Joins Paul, Berea Thessalontia, Larissa, Delphi, 100, Amphipolis Nepolis, Achaia, 200, Cyrenaica, Phoenix, Cotta, Cyrene, Aegean Sea, Athens, Sparta Cyclades, Islands, Paul speaks to, the Areopagus, 200-300 kilometers, Thrace, Paul restores life to young Eutychus, Mediterranean Sea, Troas Adramidium, Crete, 300 miles, Fair, Havens, Samony, Lacia, Nidus, Black Sea, Byzantium Heraclea, Istanbul, Asia Answer, Rhodes, Sebaste, Pergamum, Ephesus, Tripoli, Seleucia, Cremna, Lystra, X, Lycia, Myra, Proconsul Sergius Paulu, Converted, Bithynia and Pontus, and Syra, Ankara, Phrygia, Alexandria, Galatia, Paul and Barnabas, Mistaken for Gods, Pamphylia, Paphos, Porclus Fetus sends Paul to Rome to appeal to Caesar. Jerusalem Conference AD, 49, Memphis, Egypt, Salamis Cyprus, Parnassus, Sinope, Tavium, Derb, Archelais, Cappadocia, Cilicia, Caesarea Maritima, Antipatris, Tarsus, Commagene, Paul resumes his missionary travels, Judea, Antioch, Sidon, Syria, Jerusalem, Paul's visits to the region of Galatia are recorded three times. After his first apostolic journey there, Christ told Paul to go to Jerusalem. Paul wrote this letter shortly after his return from the Jerusalem council, where he received the right hands of fellowship, in Acts 15 verse 35 circa AD 52. Paul wrote, then, 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also, and he said now only his gospel was valid for salvation. 1 colon 1 Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead winky face. 2 and all the brethren which are with me, unto the churches of Galatia, 3 grace be to you and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, for who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, five to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Paul writes that he is an apostle, not by men, or by a man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, and immediately clearly states the gospel of Christ, that the Father raised him from the dead, and that the Son gave himself for our sins, in order to deliver us from this present evil world, which was in accordance to the will of God and our Father, his plan, to whom be glory for ever and ever, Amen. He sends greetings from all the believers which are with him to the churches of Galatia. Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, Rom. 1113, because Jesus Christ and the Father made him that. We have a twofold deliverance from this present evil world. 1. Christ will physically deliver us out of it at the rapture. 1 Thess. 1 10, 4 16, 17, 2 Thess. 2 colon 1, and 2. Believers are in the world, but not of this world. We are presently already spiritually delivered out of the evil world. God who made us spiritually alive to him already sees us as if he has already raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, f. 2 colon 6, God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, rom. For colon 17 cd, 
Christ is manifesting himself through the believer today as we present our mortal bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live through. 1 Tim 3.16 Rom 12.1 But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Rom 8.11 His spirit in us makes our bodies move to action to serve him. As ambassadors, we gladly serve God by helping the lost to get out of Adam and into Christ. 2 Cor. 5 colon 18-21 First, there was rebellion in heaven, and then there was rebellion on earth. Iniquity was found in Lucifer, the anointed cherub, and he became God's adversary, Satan, and he was cast out of the third heaven, Ezek. 28 colon 15, Luke 10 verse 18 he resides in the second heaven and has access to earth. Job 1. This present evil world began in the Garden of Eden when Adam disobeyed God after Satan tricked Eve into eating the fruit so they could be his gods. Genesis 3 verse 5 and will end when Christ, who was briefly the light of the world, has taken possession of heaven and earth. Before we were saved we were lost and also living according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, they disobey by not believing the gospel. F. 2 colon 2. This present evil world system is mostly run by unbelieving sinners empowered by the prince of the power of the air, Satan. The world has a course that is hurling the world along toward a one world government and religion under Antichrist. The wrath or tribulation is also called Daniel's 70th week and Jacob's trouble, Je. 30 colon 7. Shortly after our rapture, Antichrist will begin the seven years of tribulation when he signs a peace treaty with Israel that allows the unbelieving priests to offer animal sacrifices at the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27. God will send strong delusions so many will believe the lie that Antichrist is Christ, 2 Thess. 2.11 the Lord Jesus Christ will take possession of heaven in the middle of the tribulation when Satan and the bad angels are cast out into the earth by Michael and the good angels, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9. The body of Christ will replace Satan and his angels. The Lord Jesus Christ will take possession of the earth at his second coming, Mark 13 verse 32, Rom. 11 colon 25 dash 29, Heb. 928. Paul praises God for his glorious plan to rescue believers and creation. Wrong. 822. God solved our sin problem. The Father's plan of redemption was that by one cross his son would save two groups Peter's on earth and Paul's in heaven. The Father remains just while declaring the sinner justified. Wrong. 3 colon 21 dash 28. Many Galatians were Gauls from France who had settled there. Galatia is a region in Central Asia Minor which includes the cities of Antioch in Pisidia, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. Paul preached justification by faith, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39, there on his first apostolic journey. When they returned to Antioch in Syria, Paul and Barnabas had a big dispute with Judaizers that had come into the assembly while they were gone about circumcision and they went to Jerusalem by revelation to settle the matter taking Titus with them, Acts 15 verse 1. Paul wrote the Galatian letter in Acts 15 verse 35 shortly after his return to Antioch from the Jerusalem council where he received the right hands of fellowship, Gal. 2 colon 9 circa 52 AD. 6 I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, 7 which is not another, but there be some that trouble you, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. 8 But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. 9 As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Paul wonders in amazement that they are so quickly removed from him who called you into the grace of Christ. 2 Thess. 2.14 Unto another gospel. The hymn is Paul the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, wrong. 16.25 Which is not another gospel, there is no other gospel that saves, but some trouble you and would like to pervert, twist, the gospel of Christ, it is not another in that they were still preaching Christ's death, burial, and resurrection for salvation, but they were adding law-keeping to living the Christian life. Even in Antioch some Judaizers, little flock believers who did not recognize Paul, had come in and said that circumcision was necessary for salvation, justification. They added to the simplicity that is in Christ, 2 Cor. 
11 colon 3, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved, Acts 15 verse 1. Other Judaizers said circumcision was necessary to live the Christian life, sanctification. But, certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses, Acts 15 verse 5. The law neither justifies a sinner nor sanctifies a believer. In our fallen bodies we could not keep the law to be saved, so we should not try to keep the law to stay saved. Paul had received word that the Galatians were trying to control their flesh by keeping the Jewish laws. Some believers in Galatia were even being circumcised, 5 colon 2 4, 11, and keeping the Jewish holy days, for 10, which was not the instructions Christ gave them through Paul for his heavenly people. The Galatians were mixing God's instructions to his heavenly believers through Paul with God's instructions to his earthly believers through Peter. The doctrine Paul gave to them included how to live for God, their sanctification, 1 Thess. 4 colon 3, 4. Paul said that after the Jerusalem only the gospel he preached was valid, not the gospel of the kingdom, Matt. 423, 935, 2400 hours 14. Mark 1 verse 14. God's laws will be kept in the kingdom because of the everlasting new covenant, Je. 31 colon 31 dash 34, Ezek. 36 colon 24 dash 28. The gospel of our salvation is, how that Christ died, for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. Christ took our sins and gives us his righteousness, 2 Cor. 521, do not associate with anyone who preaches another gospel, but let him be accursed, cut him off, put him out of the assembly so the congregation is not affected by his heretical false instructions, that he may suffer the consequences that God wants to instill for his lack of submission to his word rightly divided, 510, 12, 1 Cor. 317, 2 Tim, 215, they need to live according to the truth that Christ gave to Paul. The Judaizers were not teaching the truth, so put them out of the assembly and stop listening to them. The false minister is not obedient to Christ's gospel to the Gentiles in this dispensation of grace, but is teaching contrary to the truth which is destructive. They are preaching against God's message for this present time, the dispensation of grace, f. 3 colon 2, Paul's my gospel is justification by faith or the imputed righteousness of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel, let them be accursed. For emphasis and to make sure they heard him, Paul repeats his warning, or curse. His vehement language and abruptness reveal his anger concerning their spiritual condition. In the next dispensation, an angel will preach from heaven, Revelation 14 verse 6, so if God did not have different dispensations there would be a contradiction. Satan is waging a doctrinal warfare to lure the body of Christ away from Pauline truth so they are ineffective in their service to God. Satan wants to keep believers ignorant of the word of God rightly divided, mixing grace and law. The truth is that the flesh was not saved and cannot be reformed, it must be inoperative, mortified, Rom. 8.13 Many believers are surprised when they discover that after they are saved, the sin nature still resides in their mortal bodies. Our flesh did not get saved when we did. Our sin nature resides in our body, and we need our body to be a vehicle for our inner man, spirit and soul, until we get our immortal, glorified bodies, 1 Cor. 15 colon 51 dash 54, Phil. 321, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, 1 Cor. 617, there is a war inside every believer between the flesh and the spirit. This war forces us to mature and to decide moment by moment to do what is right. Paul will explain that they were saved by faith, justification, and must live by faith, sanctification, in these fallen bodies as we go through the details of our lives until we get new bodies, 516. Anyone in a fallen body is subject to sin, and only. God's Spirit using His Holy Word can work in the believer to keep him from sin. Circumcision and the keeping of Jewish holy days are not necessary for His heavenly people. We cannot mix Peter, law, and Paul, grace. Peter is part of a royal priesthood and will live in the kingdom on earth. Israel was to be a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, a royal priesthood and holy nation, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, but we will live eternal in the heavens, 2 Cor. 5 colon 1. 
Galatians is reproof for departing from the doctrine of justification and sanctification given in Romans chapters 1 to 8. Doctrine declares what is right, reproof exposes what is not right, correction tells how to make it right, and instruction in righteousness reveals how to keep it right. 2 Tim 3 16 17 10 For do I now persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. 11 But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. 12 For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For am I now seeking to persuade men, or God? My motive is not to be a man-pleaser, but a Christ-server. But I certify, testify, you, believers, that the gospel which was preached of me is not something I learned from a man. For I neither received it from a man, neither was I taught it by a man, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul formally certifies or attests to the fact that the gospel that he preaches was directly from Christ and was not invented by a man. Christ waited until he saved Paul to reveal God's solution to man's sin problem. The Son gave himself for our sins and the Father raised him from the dead so the Father could impute his Son's righteousness and declare the believer justified. Paul received that gospel by direct revelation of Jesus Christ. 13 For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God, and wasted it, 14 And profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. For you have heard of my former manner of life in time past, before my conversion, in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and tried to exterminate the believing remnant of Israel, Peter's group, Acts 8, 1, 9, 1. Paul told King Agrippa that he often punished the kingdom saints with fanatical zeal being exceedingly mad against them, Acts 26 verses 9 to 12. Paul thought they were a heretical sect and that Jesus of Nazareth was an imposter and that he was serving God, John 16 verse 2. I profited, financially and in status, in the Jews' religion excelling more than most my equals in my own nation, being exceptionally zealous of the traditions of my forefathers, Acts 22 verse 3, Phil. 3 colon 4 dash 6. The religion that God had begun, Judaism, had deteriorated to the Jews' religion because of the corrupt traditions of men that added to and diluted God's word, Mark 7 verse 9, Colossians 2 verse 8, 1 Peter 1 verse 18, dot. 15 But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, 16 to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, 17 neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia, and returned again unto Damascus. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's, Israel's, womb, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach Christ among the heathen, all lost Jews and Gentiles, I did not consult with any humans, but Christ, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to confer with those which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia, probably to Mount Sinai, for 25, and then I returned to Damascus. When did Christ give Apostle Paul a new ministry and message that was distinct from the Twelve? It pleased God to snatch Saul of Tarsus out of Israel's program after Israel had refused their one-year extension of mercy, a renewed offer of the kingdom through Peter's group. The son had asked the father to give Israel one more year to repent. Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it, and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down, Luke 13 verses 6-9. The fig tree bore very little fruit of faith after it was fertilized with the Holy Ghost and heard it preached that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah. Israel fell as a nation in Acts 7 when the religious leaders rejected the king of their kingdom and stoned the Holy Ghost-filled little flock member Stephen committing the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost spoken of by Jesus Christ. The blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Matt 12 31, 32 Saul was a ringleader in the stoning of Stephen, Leviticus. 24 colon 14 dash 16, Deuteronomy. 13 colon 6 dash 11, Acts 7 verse 58, and therefore he could only be saved if God began an entirely new dispensation. God did show him grace and opened up a new dispensation which began with Saul's salvation on the road to Damascus in Acts 9 and ends at the rapture. Paul was born out of due time, a premature birth from his mother Israel, 1 Cor. 
15 8. Without being prophesied in the Bible, Jesus of Nazareth dramatically saved Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, Acts 9 verses 3 to 20, 22 1 16, 26 9 18. Paul was not saved by the gospel of the kingdom. Paul was uniquely saved by grace while the gospel of the kingdom was still being preached. The nation of Israel stumbled on their Messiah at the cross, Rom. 9,31-33, and fell in Acts 7 with the stoning of Stephen, Rom. 11, 11, 12, but the little flock continued until they were placed on hold by God at the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15. The return after a year in heaven of the glorified risen Lord Jesus Christ to save Saul of Tarsus on that road to Damascus in Acts 9 even surprised Satan, since the dispensation of grace was a completely unprophesied mystery, 1 Cor. 2 6 8. Satan had expected that God would send the wrath and judge the unbelievers in Israel. But, instead, Christ interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery, delaying the wrath. Paul was the first sinner saved into the body of Christ, 1 Tim. 116, and the due time testifier of all that Christ accomplished by the cross, Acts 20 verse 21, Titus 1 verse 3, Rom. 325. 26. If God had not shown him mercy, he would have been punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. 2 Thess. 1 9. God revealed his Son in him. Paul had the life of Christ working in him. 2 20. 2 Cor. 4 7. 11. 18 Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days. 19 But other of the apostles saw in none, save James the Lord's brother. 20 Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Paul preached that Christ is the Son of God and was in Damascus and Arabia for a total of three years, but had to escape that city by being let down by the wall in a basket. Acts 9 verses 20 to 25, 2 Cor. 11 32 33 he then went up to jerusalem to see peter but had to leave after 15 days because the jews there wanted to kill him acts 9 verses 26 to 30. peter first heard paul's testimony from barnabas acts 9 verse 27 he saw none of the other apostles but i met james the lord's brother god inspired paul to constantly defend his distinct apostleship because it was constantly under attack the things that I write to you, observe, before God that it is the truth and I lie not. Paul understood Christ's ministry through Peter to the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, but Christ had a different ministry through Paul. 21 afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, 22, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. 23 But they had heard only, that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. 24 And they glorified God in me. He then preached in his home towns, Tarsus is in Cilicia, and in Syria, Acts 9 verse 30. His face remained unknown to the churches of Judea which were in Christ. The Messianic churches were in Christ as a result of trusting in the Son of God to sit on David's throne, the Gospel of the Kingdom, Acts 2 verses 30-38. Peter's group were sanctified before us and more will be after our rapture, Acts 26 verse 18, 1 Peter 5 verse 14. But they had only heard that he who used to persecute them in the past now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. The Jewish believing remnant, Peter's group, glorified God because he had saved his and their worst enemy. Paul is the one apostle to the one body of Christ. The twelve apostles will judge the twelve tribes of Israel on earth, Matt. 1928, at the cross, by Isaac Watts, 1707. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? And did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? Refrain, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Thy body slain, sweet Jesus, thine and bathed in its own blood, while the firm mark of wrath divine, his soul in anguish stood. Was it for crimes that I have done he groaned upon the tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree, well might the sun in darkness hide, and shut its glories in, when Christ, the mighty maker, died. For man the creature's sin, thus might I hide my blushing face while his dear cross appears, dissolve my heart in thankfulness, and melt mine eyes to tears. 
but drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away tis all that I can do. Christ on the Cross by Francisco de Zerberon, 1627, an outstanding painting. Chapter 2 Paul communicated that gospel at the Jerusalem Council 2 10 Paul's gospel was understood by the apostles in Jerusalem. 2 11 21 The truth of Paul's gospel was defended before Peter. 2 colon 1 Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also. Paul reports how he notified the little flock apostles of the great dispensational change ushered in by God. For 17 years Paul had very little contact with the 12 apostles, he went up to the Jerusalem council 14 years after his 15-day visit with Peter three years earlier. The Lord waited until Paul had a firm grasp of the doctrine committed to him before he shared it with the 12 apostles of Israel. Paul was most likely saved around AD 35, one year after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and the stoning of Stephen. Paul went to Jerusalem five times after his conversion. Paul doesn't mention his visits in Acts 12 verse 25. If we add 17 to 35 we get 52, was then AD 52. 2 And I went up by revelation, and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, or had run, in vain. Paul went to Jerusalem by direct revelation from Christ. He was not asked to come there by the Jerusalem apostles. Paul's mission from Christ was to successfully communicate that gospel to the kingdom saints, which is God's solution to man's sin problem, the son's imputed righteousness, and to let them know that their ministry was on hold. The believing remnant of Israel in Jerusalem had expected Christ's second coming before then. Peter's group had sold their property after Pentecost because they expected to go through Jacob's trouble, the tribulation, Je. 30 colon 7, Luke 12 verse 33. Acts 2 45, 435, the last seven years of Daniel's timeline for Israel, Dan. 9 colon 24 27. Many in Jerusalem were asking the little flock where is the promise of his coming. 2 Peter 3 verse 4. The leaders in Jerusalem did not know what the delay in Christ's second coming was. Paul communicated and made the leaders in Jerusalem understand Christ's new message to the Gentiles through him. Christ had begun a new and different dispensation formerly kept secret but revealed to all through Paul, Rom. 1625, 26. He met privately so that the false brethren could not argue against him. If the leaders did not understand the gospel or what God was doing now his trip would be useless, vain. The sure mercies of David, Acts 13 verse 34, is Christ's imputed spirit and that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles is justification by faith, Rom. 5 colon 1. Paul said through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, sins, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39. Paul informed them of all that God was doing at this current time, namely, his great dispensational shift, his new apostle, and Christ's new ministry through him. Christ from heaven had a new and different message to a new group of believers that would live in heaven. 3 But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, for in that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. 5 To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Paul brought along a young uncircumcised Greek preacher Titus, exhibit it and he was not forced to be circumcised. If the apostles in Jerusalem did not compel Titus to be circumcised, that meant that Gentiles in the new dispensation do not need to be circumcised. False brethren had come in secretly to spy out the liberty we have in Christ and they had most likely seen that Titus was not circumcised in the public bathhouses. Our liberty in Christ is not having to do the works of the law, such as circumcision. Under the law, proselytes to Judaism did get circumcised when they converted to Judaism, Genesis 17 verses 10 to 14. Proselytes believed that Israel's God was the true God and demonstrated their faith by doing the same things as the Jews. In Esther 8 verse 17 we read that many Gentiles became Jews. But in this new and different dispensation, it is a sign of unbelief to get circumcised because that is saying that what Christ did for us was not enough. Paul and his companions stood their ground against the false brethren. 
Not for an hour did they agree that circumcision was necessary for salvation or sanctification, so the truth of the gospel could continue, Acts 15 verses 1 and 5. Works of the law neither saves a sinner, nor sanctifies a believer, Titus 3 verse 5. In Romans 7, Paul used himself as an example to expose the Galatian error of going back under the law that only revived the sinful flesh and made him functionally useless to God. There was nothing good in his flesh, he needed to live by a new law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus and with his renewed mind walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, wrong. 8 colon 1 4 The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6 The law functions by fear of punishment, the if-then principle, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6. Even Israel could not keep the law and so God has promised them a new covenant so they can keep the law of which Pentecost was a foretaste, Heb. 6 colon 4 dash 6 dot 6 but of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it mocketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Paul says that James, Peter, and John added nothing to him because he already understood what they believed, but he added to them. God is not a respecter of men's performance, he is impressed by his son's performance. Rom. 2.11 God waited to reveal his solution to man's sin problem, his son's righteousness imputed to believers, until after the cross and after Paul was saved. 7 But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, on the contrary, Paul added to their knowledge, because he told them about the gospel and the mystery. The modern Bibles change the word of to to making it seem to be the same gospel, instead of two different gospels, to two audiences. Christ committed the gospel of the uncircumcision to Paul. Paul preached Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, wrong. 1625, justification by faith in Christ crucified for our sins and risen again with no works or circumcision required. Christ committed the gospel of the circumcision to Peter. On Pentecost, Peter preached Christ according to prophecy, repent, change your minds and believe that the name of your Messiah is Jesus of Nazareth, be baptized, and you will receive remission of sins and the Holy Ghost to empower you to be part of his royal priesthood in the earthly kingdom, Exodus 30 verse 21, Acts 2 38, for colon 10 dash 12, 1 Peter 2 verses 6 to 10. Circumcision is required. God gave Abraham the token of circumcision. Notice that the leaders in Jerusalem saw the truth of God's dispensational change. God had let Peter know that he had decided to change his dealings with mankind. And the dietary law, Acts 10 verses 13 and 15, 16, by one isolated event when he ordered Peter to go to Cornelius. Peter told Cornelius, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, or come unto one of another nation, but God hath shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean, Acts 10 verse 28. Peter remembered this at the Jerusalem council saying, that God made no difference between Jews and Gentiles and that both are saved by faith, Acts 15 verses 7 to 11. God made the nation of Israel a vessel of honor, Deuteronomy 7 colon 6, during prophecy. He was not unrighteous to temporarily make the nation of the same lump, a vessel of dishonor during the mystery, Rom 914, 21. God will make the nation a vessel of honor again out of the believing remnant after the fullness of the Gentiles, the rapture. We are living during Israel's national spiritual blindness, however, God is not finished with Israel and will resume prophecy once he is finished with the mystery, Rom. 11 colon 25 dash 27. During the dispensation of grace, the nation of Israel is in apostasy and does not recognize Jesus of Nazareth as their king. Paul and Barnabas also declared the miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them, Acts 15 verse 12. We know that the Jews require a sign, 1 Cor. 122. At the end of the Jerusalem council, Acts 15 verses 1 to 35, it was determined that, 1. God is visiting the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, Acts 15 verse 14. 2. Gentiles are not under the law and do not need to be circumcised, Acts 15 verses 1 and 23, 24, 28, 3. Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, Rom. 
11.13, 4. The prophetic program will resume after God is done forming that Gentile group and set up the kingdom, and 5. The Gentiles were asked to avoid certain foods and fornication offensive to Jews so they would be more likely to be saved into the body of Christ. Acts 15 verses 16 to 18. Dot. 8. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Christ, in his earthly ministry, gave Peter his authority and the Holy Spirit allowed many to be saved by his preaching. Christ, in his ministry from heaven, gave Paul his authority and the Holy Spirit saved many by his preaching. The Holy Spirit validated Paul's apostleship by having him repeat the signs Peter did during the Acts period. Paul healed a lame man just like Peter had. Peter spoke in tongues and so did Paul. Peter healed the sick and raised Borgus from the dead. Paul also healed the sick and raised Eutychus from the dead. 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. James, Peter, and John were held in reputation as pillars in Jerusalem, but their authority did not impress Paul, nor was he subject to them. But when they perceived that God had delayed his coming, interrupted or paused, prophecy and had begun a new dispensation, with a new apostle, and a new message, to a new audience, all, using a new operating system, grace, not the law, then they gave their approval by shaking hands on it. After the Jerusalem council only Paul's gospel was valid, 1 colon 6-9. Paul received grace, power, wisdom, revelation, of Christ to dispense his new message. God saved Paul, a blasphemer, revealed the mystery of the dispensation of grace to him, and made him his apostle to the Gentiles. God did not make his hidden wisdom known before that, f. 3 colon 1 dash 9. Because if God had let the mystery be known, Satan would not have allowed Christ to be crucified, 1 cor. 2 colon 6 dash 8. Satan did not know that he lost both heaven and earth until Paul. Christ has reclaimed both realms but has not taken possession yet. The apostles in Jerusalem loosed, Matt. 1619, 1818, themselves from carrying out their commission and concentrated on caring for the existing believing remnant, writing letters to their future believers, until they died out in the first century. Paul went to the heathen, all lost Jews and Gentiles. Perhaps Peter had realized during Paul's 15-day visit that he would not lead the little flock into the kingdom, so he let James take over. Christ gave Paul a different ministry, message, and audience than Peter. Ten only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Paul was eager to help Peter's poor group in Jerusalem and brought them financial contributions on several occasions, Acts 11 verses 29 and 30, 12, 25, Rom. 15, 25, 26. The believing remnant of Israel in Jerusalem were poor because they believed that the kingdom and, therefore God's wrath, Jacob's trouble, the tribulation, were at hand. So they would not be able to buy and sell since they would not take the mark of the beast, Luke 12 verse 33, Acts 2 44, 4 32, Revelation 13 verse 18. 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. 12. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Paul recounts an incident during Peter's visit to Antioch. Peter had come to listen to Paul and to see what he was doing. It is significant that Peter left Jerusalem and traveled to Antioch after the Jerusalem council, for it demonstrates that he understood that the earthly kingdom was postponed, Acts 1 verse 8, 2 Peter 3 verses 15 and 16. In Antioch, Peter was sitting and eating with the Gentiles just like Paul, because he saw and perceived that the middle wall of partition was no longer up. God had a middle wall of partition between Israel and all other nations. Israel was above the other nations. Deuteronomy 7 colon 6, 26 colon 19, 28 colon 13. They had the token of circumcision and then the law was added through Moses to further the distinction by dietary and other laws. God had let Peter know, in Acts 10, that the Jewish dietary laws were no longer in effect because God had changed how he was doing things after he saved Saul in Acts 9. In Acts 15 verses 7 to 11, Peter said that God decided that he, Peter, should preach to the Gentiles, and he did to the household of Cornelius. 
God showed Peter that he had changed his dealings with mankind. God was no longer enforcing the dietary laws that separated Israel from other nations now so Peter should not call any man common or unclean, Acts 10 verse 28. Those Gentiles with Cornelius believed Peter's gospel and received the Holy Ghost. God was not putting a difference between Jews and Gentiles now. At the council, Peter essentially said, why should we demand the Gentiles to follow the law that we cannot follow? We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they, Acts 15 verses 10 and 11. All people, regardless of dispensation, are saved by God's grace through faith, and not by works of the law, Rom. 3 colon 29-31, Heb. 11 colon 6, but the nation of Israel is required to have their faith demonstrated by works, such as water baptism and circumcision, Mark 16 verse 16, James 2 verse 24. The kingdom on earth church had to believe that the name, Acts 4 verse 12, of their Messiah and King was Jesus of Nazareth. Gentiles are saved differently in mystery. His death on the cross for our sins and resurrection was an undeniable demonstration of God's love for us. Gentiles today do not need to go through Israel to be saved, but are saved apart from Israel and the law, by direct faith in what Christ alone has done. But Paul withstood Peter to the face because Peter behaved wrong and was to be blamed. 13 And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Dissimulation means hiding under a false pretense, hypocrisy, to conceal the real opinion or purpose. Peter, the other Jews, and even Barnabas saw the men of James come and decided to eat apart from the Gentiles at their own table. James, who probably had a very strong personality, seemed to have understood the dispensational change Amos 9 verses 11 and 12, Acts 15 verses 14 to 16, but then he seemed to have lost sight of that fact and had Paul do many Jewish things in Acts 21. Law-keeping is consistent with the gospel of the kingdom, but not the gospel of Christ. Dot. 14 But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? At the Jerusalem council, Peter had understood the truth of the gospel, mystery, that his group was on hold, and people could now only be saved into the body of Christ by believing Paul's gospel. Individual Jews and Gentiles saved in this dispensation form the one body of Christ, 328. Peter admitted that he still sins and cannot keep the law, Acts 15 verse 10. But now by withdrawing from eating with the Gentiles to eating with the Jews he is being hypocritical and by his actions saying that the middle wall of partition is still up, erected, and in order for Gentiles to be accepted by God, they must become proselytes to Judaism, be circumcised, water baptized, and keep the rest of the laws of Moses in order to be righteous before God. When Paul saw that Peter and the others were not living according to the truth that God had, 1. Changed dispensations, 2. Broken down the middle wall of partition, 3. Made no difference between Jew and Gentile, 4. And no longer enforced Israel's favored nation status and the laws that separated the Jews from the Gentiles. Then, Paul rebuked Peter. Paul basically said something like this to Peter, God has shown you several times by your vision and by me that he has begun a new dispensation as evidenced by him not enforcing the dietary laws now, so why are you acting as if he is not? God now considers the Gentiles clean because the nation of Israel fell, Rom. 11 colon 11 13. You know that no human can keep the law even with his spirit in us so why are you forcing the Gentiles to keep the law in order to be righteous before God? The purpose of the law was to point out our sins and our need for the Redeemer, Rom. 3 19 20. If you say that the dietary laws are in effect when God has said they are not, then you are going against what God said he is doing now. That is not walking upright according to the truth of the gospel. Please notice that Peter does not say that he is the one in authority. Paul mentions the middle wall of partition in Ephesians 2 verse 14, cf. 2 colon 11 18. Remember the twelve are not in the body of Christ. The twelve apostles will rule over the twelve tribes of Israel in the earthly kingdom, Matt. 1928. By his actions Peter was going backward and denying that the middle wall of partition is down since Israel. The circumcision is not the favored nation at this time. 15 We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, 
Paul says that Peter and he are Jews by birth and are not sinners like the Gentiles, idol worshippers. 16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. The modern Bibles leave out the word of and replace it with in putting the emphasis on the believer's faith, instead of on the faith of Jesus Christ. Paul tells Peter we know that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but we are justified by our faith in the faith of Jesus, the only one who kept the law perfectly. The faith of Jesus is Christ's spirit in us. Why does Satan not want us to know about the doctrine of the faith of Jesus? Satan does not want us to know the truth of our complete assurance resting solidly on Christ's faith. Jesus Christ had the faith to obey the Father's plan of salvation. The Son not only knew that the Father would raise him from the dead, but that he would impute his righteousness to the believers. 316, PSA. 1610, Heb. 12, 2. Keeping the law could never justify anyone. Christ has two ministries and his death for sins on the cross and resurrection is the foundation for both prophecy and mystery. Prophecy is Christ's ministry to his earthly believers, and mystery is Christ's ministry to his heavenly believers. Believers in both groups put their faith in Christ's faith. It cost God a lot to redeem us by his blood. When Paul says, but now that often indicates his great dispensational shift, as in these few examples, for colon 9, wrong. 321 F 213 Colossians 1 verse 26 17 But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. If while we seek to be justified by Christ, I go back to how things were before Acts 9 and say God is still making a distinction between Jews and Gentiles, the circumcision and the uncircumcision, when he is not, is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. His truth still stands. 18 For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Paul uses I statements to gently tell Peter he was sinning by his conduct. I make myself a transgressor if I pretend I can earn righteousness by keeping the law, or if my actions say that the middle wall of partition is still up, that his dietary laws are still in effect, and that his nation Israel is separate and favored above. Other people in this present dispensation. Then I deny the truth of what God says is doing now, which is sinful pretending. 19 For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. For I am dead to the law through Christ, because I died with Christ and cannot be condemned twice, that would be double jeopardy. Paul is not trying to keep the law to be right with God, he is dead to the law, and he lives by faith in Christ's faith. Christ redeemed us through the sacrificial system. He also kept the law perfectly because it was in his heart, PSA. 40 8, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth, Rom. 10 4, and the believers are dead to the law. We identified with Christ's crucifixion and resurrection and were spiritually baptized into Christ, identified, at salvation. We didn't feel this happening but we know it is true because God says so in his word. Our sin nature was crucified with Christ when we believed. The old man or flesh the sin nature cannot be made over or improved. The old man is who we were in Adam before we were saved. It must be killed and reckoned dead. The believer is both dead to the law and redeemed from it so that his spirit can quicken our mortal body to serve God, Rom. 8.11, the new man is Christ formed in the believer, Christ's life in us, 419, Colossians 1 verse 27. We are dead to the law, so that we might live unto Christ. 21, old man, am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I, new man, live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. When I believed my old man, Adam, was crucified with Christ, and I received his life in me, Rom. 6 3 10, I am crucified with Christ, our sin nature, nevertheless I live, our soul, the realist still lives, yet not I, our spirit has been joined to his spirit, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, in this body on earth, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me, took my place. I put my little faith in his perfect faith and now I live by his life, his spirit working in me. 21 I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. 
Paul tells Peter, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by keeping the law, then Christ died for no reason. I frustrate the grace of God if I believe I could be righteous before God by trying to keep the old covenant law, because no mere human could. We are all fallen sons of Adam, Rom. 512. Christ knew that the only way for anyone to stand before the Holy Father was for him to die in man's place and give both Peter's and Paul's group his righteousness, his life, by faith. Peter's group will receive his spirit, be born again, individually during the tribulation and nationally at his second coming under the new covenant, Je. 31-31-34, Ezek. 36-24-28. There is no middle wall of partition today. We frustrate the grace of God if we make a difference between Jews and the Gentiles. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, body of Christ, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, the Gentiles, and to them that were nigh, the Jews. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father, f. 2 colon 14 18. God is not dealing with nations today, but with individuals. Individual Jews and Gentiles who believe the gospel of Christ become members of the body of Christ, 328. If we think we can be justified by keeping the law, then we frustrate the grace of God, 5 colon 4. Peter and the other Jews were pretending by their actions that they didn't know that God had begun a great dispensational shift, the mystery, when he saved Paul on the road to Damascus. They were putting up a fake front for the men who came from James and denying the truth of the gospel. We are not to be law keepers or men pleasers, but Christ servers. For in the dispensation of grace we are justified by faith and live by faith in Jesus Christ with his life working in us as we daily reprogram, renew our minds in his word rightly divided. With his spirit in us we live by faith in God's instructions to us. Paul calls Peter's group the Israel of God since their hope is to live and serve God in the kingdom on earth, 616, Luke 12, 32, 21, 43. But our hope is to live and serve God in the heavens, 2 Cor. 5, 1. Contrasting Peter's and Paul's doctrine. Doctrine teachings. Peter, Christ's earthly ministry gospel of the kingdom gospel of the circumcision sent to Israel only. Christ as king on the earth, a kingdom of priests, a great nation, Israel. Under the law sent to baptize salvation by works justified by works. Waiting for the atonement. Conditional forgiveness can lose the Holy Spirit. Unforgivable sins. Keep the commandments require signs. According to prophecy. Paul, Christ's resurrected ministry gospel of the grace of God gospel of the uncircumcision sent to everyone. Christ as head of the body, the body of Christ. Seated in heavenly places under grace sent to preach. Salvation by the free gift justified by his blood have now received the atonement, unconditional forgiveness, sealed unto the day of redemption, forgiven us of all sins, abolished the commandments, don't require signs, according to mystery, two gospels, but contrarywise, when they, Peter, James, John, saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision, Gentiles, was committed unto me, Paul, as the gospel of circumcision, Jews, was unto Peter. Galatians 2 verse 7, KJV. Chapter 3 After salvation the schoolmaster is no longer needed 3 colon 1-5 The Spirit's ministry of Christ's gospel by Paul and Galatia. 3 to 6-9 The illustration of Abraham's imputed righteousness. 3 colon 10-16 Christ bore the curse of the law so believers could receive his spirit. 3 colon 17 dash 22 the law was added to promise until the seed came who kept the law 3 colon 23 dash 29 after faith is come the schoolmaster is not needed we live by faith 3 colon 10 foolish galatians who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes jesus christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you to this only would i learn of you receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith the Galatians knew they were saved by grace through faith plus nothing, Rom. 1 to 5, but failed to live by grace through faith plus nothing, Rom. 6 to 8, Paul says, O oh, foolish Galatians, and asks five questions to make them think. 
They had left the truth, live by faith, and were trying to live right before God by keeping the law, being circumcised and observing Jewish feast days, 5 colon 2, 4 10. The Galatians were dissembling and not being loyal to him or his instructions to them that he began to receive from the risen Lord Jesus Christ after Paul was saved on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. They were denying God's great dispensational shift from dealings with his earthly group, now on pause until after a rapture, to dispensing new instructions to his heavenly group. God never changes in his character, but he dispenses different instructions at different times. Who has bewitched, cast a spell on you, to make you think the law is still in effect and must be kept? We are not under the law, but under grace, Rom. 614 the fool has said in his heart that there is no God, when there is. The fool has said God is not forming the body of Christ to live in heaven, when he is, PSA. 14 colon 1 F. 3 colon 1 dash 9, Paul set forth, Rom. 325, Christ crucified and resurrected so vividly that it seemed as if they were standing at the foot of the cross when they saw it with eyes of faith, 1 Cor. 118, 15 colon 1 dash 4. Every chapter in Galatians points to the cross, 1 colon 1, 4, 2 16, 20, 3 colon 1, 22, 4 colon 5, 5 11, 6 14. The most important thing in life is to make sure we are saved. God, who is love, is also just and must judge sin. Paul said, I just want to know, were you saved by keeping the law or by hearing the gospel? They were saved by hearing the powerful word of God, Rom. 1017. His spirit is the promise. In whom, Christ, ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1 verse 13. In this dispensation people are received the spirit by hearing the word of God that is to us and about us. Our gospel and instructions are in Romans to Philemon, although all scripture is profitable, to Tim. 316. It is possible for a person not to be saved if they have never heard the gospel of your salvation in Paul's letters. 3. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Are you so foolish to think that having begun in the Spirit, saved by faith, you are now made perfect by the flesh, able to live holy lives by keeping the law? For have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, they suffered persecution from the unbelieving Jews who did not understand that God's instructions to his heavenly people were different from his instructions to his earthly people. F. 1 colon 9, 10. If they will not accept Paul's correction of their error and stop following the Judaizers that said believers need to live by obeying the Mosaic laws, then they will have suffered in vain. 5. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. That he is the spirit of the risen Lord Jesus Christ according to the mystery, Rom. 1625, ministered by Paul, the elders, and believers at Galatia, Acts 14 verse 23. The spiritual gifts were by the hearing of faith. The sign gifts showed the Jews and the Gentiles that just as Christ had worked through Peter, he was not working through Paul. Paul and the believers had sign gifts during the Acts period when the church was a child, before Christ's complete revelation of the mystery was fully given to Paul, Rom. 1529, 1 Cor. 122, 12 colon 4 dash 13, 13 colon 8 dash 13, F. 4 colon 10 dash 16. The sign gifts died out during Paul's lifetime after the unbelieving Jews were set aside for the third and final time, Acts 13 46, 18 colon 6, 28 colon 28. Paul essentially said, the spirit works through you by the faith of Jesus Christ in you, so are you going to turn back to the law to try to control your flesh? 6 Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Just as with Abraham, righteousness comes by faith, and we live by faith. The Judaizers pointed to Abraham as an example to be circumcised, but Paul points to Abraham as an example not to be circumcised. Paul uses the illustration of Abraham receiving imputed righteousness by faith while he was uncircumcised when he believed that although he was dead reproductively, God would give him as many descendants, Rom. 4 colon 1 dash 25. Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Genesis 15 verses 5 and 6. 
But Abraham had to wait in paradise until Christ died and rose before the son's perfect righteousness could be imputed to him and then God took him and the spirits of the other justified kingdom saints with him to heaven, 2 Cor. 12 colon 4, Heb. 12 22, 23. There is more than one gospel in the Bible. Abraham believed in a different gospel than the one Paul preached. God will multiply Abraham's seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, Genesis 22 verse 17. The twelve apostles did not understand the meaning of the cross until after Christ rose from the dead and explained it to them, Luke 18 verses 31 to 34, 24 colon 45 dash 48. Peter preached the death of Christ as a murder indictment, bad news, in Acts 2 verse 23 until after he learned from Paul that the cross is good news for believers in mystery and prophecy, Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 26, dot. 7 know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Know therefore that those who are saved by faith and live by faith are the children of Abraham, the father of all them that believe, and walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, Rom. 4 11, 12, 8 and the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And they shall all nations be blessed. 9 So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Everyone who is saved by faith and live by faith is blessed with faithful Abraham. The scriptures foresaw God's plan to save Gentiles in both prophecy and mystery. God said to Abraham, And they shall all families of the earth be blessed, Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. But in Genesis 22 verse 18 God said, And thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Abraham understood that all nations would be blessed through his seed and the need for a human blood sacrifice, and so did Jesus Christ, the descendant of Abraham and David, Matt. 1 colon 1. 10 for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. All those who think they can be saved by keeping the law are under the curse of the law, which is that they must keep all of the law all of the time, and no human can, Deuteronomy. 27 colon 26, James 2 verse 10, Rom. 3 23, 5 12. 11 but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for, the just shall live by faith. Paul quotes Habakkuk 2 verse 4. In Habakkuk the emphasis is on his faith in God, in Romans on the just, in Galatians on shall live, and in Hebrews by faith. We are not justified by the law, nor do we live by the law because God said, the just shall live by faith. The Galatians were justified by faith, but trying to live by keeping the law. 12 and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Paul quotes Leviticus 18 verse 5. Working to earn our salvation is not of faith, the man that wants to be righteous by keeping the law must live in them and keep the whole law, 5 colon 3. The Mosaic law expressed God's desire for how Israel was to live. The Ten Commandments is God's righteous will set in brief, other rules govern their social life, and the ordinances govern the religious life of Israel. 13 Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, 14 that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Paul quotes Deuteronomy 21 verse 23. Christ paid for our sins and redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, condemned in our place, for it is written, he that hangs on a tree, is crucified, is accursed of God. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The blessing of Abraham is the promise of Christ's Spirit, his righteousness, Genesis 15 verse 6, Acts 13 verses 32 to 39, Rom. 4 colon 3, 23 to 25, by faith in the gospel, Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 26, resulting in eternal life. God did not have to impute righteousness to the believer, but chose to do so by his grace. During this dispensation that ends with the rapture, Gentiles, all people, have an opportunity to be saved by faith in the gospel, Rom. 11 colon 1 dash 25. The Son of God put on human flesh and became a man so that he could shed his blood in man's place and redeem him, Genesis 3 verse 15, John 1 verse 14, Phil. 2 colon 5 dash 8, Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 26. While on earth, the Lord Jesus Christ was 100% God and 100% man. 
Man had sinned so it was man's blood that was required to be shed, but the blood had to be perfect so it had to be God's blood. Acts 20 verse 28 Jesus Christ did not inherit the sin nature since he was born of a virgin by the Holy Ghost. Luke 1 verse 35 Mike 5 colon 2 God the Son had perfect faith, he obeyed his Father perfectly. Christ is the seed of Abraham and all who believe are blessed to have his imputed righteousness, his spirit, in them. The body of Christ believers have the indwelling Holy Spirit now and will receive their glorified bodies at the rapture, while Abraham and the other earthly kingdom believers will receive their glorified bodies after Christ's second coming and have the indwelling Holy Spirit as part of the new covenant. Ja. 31 colon 31 dash 34 Isaac. 36 colon 24 dash 28. Pentecost was a foretaste of that time. Heb. 6 colon 4 dot. 15 Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth, or addeth thereto. Paul said, even the original contract between men is binding and cannot be broken by adding to it later. 16 Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Paul identified Christ as thy seed. One letter S does make a difference. Promises. God promised Abraham and the seed that through him righteousness would be imputed to the believers in what God said to them. John 8 verse 56. Jesus Christ knew that if he died and paid for Adam's and mankind's sins that the Father would give believers his spirit because he promised to do so. 316 Genesis 22 verse 18. So, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, Heb. 12 colon 2 17 and this i say that the covenant that was confirmed before of god in christ the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect 18 for if the inheritance be of the law it is no more of promise but god gave it to abraham by promise 19 wherefore then serveth the law it was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. 20 Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. 21 Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. 22 But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Christ confirmed the covenant or oath to Abraham, the promise of his spirit, by going through with the cross and believers receive his spirit. The promise could not be negated and made of none effect by adding the law given to Moses for. 130 years later. If we inherit the Spirit by keeping the law then it is no longer a promise, it could be earned, but God gave it to Abraham by promise and counted him righteous because he believed God. Genesis 15 verse 6, Rom. 4 colon 3. Abraham was justified by faith before he received the covenant of circumcision. God gave Abraham the promise of eternal life, which is the result of imputed righteousness. God made the covenant to Abraham concerning his seed by promise. The promise was by God's grace. Grace and works are mutually exclusive, wrong. 11 colon 6. What is the purpose of the law then? The purpose of the law is the knowledge of sin, wrong. 3 19, 20. The law makes mankind conscious of the evil that dwells in our nature. We need to be awakened to the fact that we are helpless, guilty, and unable to keep the law. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23. Sadly, the law also exposed the power of evil in us to want to disobey God's law, our true deplorable moral condition. This is another reason we know that the Bible is God's word because mankind would not write such unfavorable things about ourselves. The law was added until the seed should come to show mankind that they fall short of God's high standard, the law, because they have inherited the sin nature from Adam. Sin reigned before the law came, even if it was not imputed, it still existed in the people, Rom. 5 colon 12 dash 14. Moses was the mediator between two parties, God and Israel, when God gave the law on Mount Sinai and the angels ordained it, 319. God is one and he did not mediate a two-party agreement with Abraham, he made a promise. God gave the promise to Abraham by one party, himself alone, a one-sided oath, all on the part of God, Heb. 614. Is the law against the promises of God? God forbid. 
Paul anticipates questions and answers them before they are asked. The law is not against the promise, but the promise still stands. The law is holy, just, and good. The problem was we could not keep it because of our sinful flesh. Rom 7 12 18 If there had been a law that could have given life, then righteousness should have been obtained that way. But the only way to save us was by his son. The purpose of the law was to make the Jews aware of their unrighteousness. Israel had a mirror for all the nations to see their sin. Even the Jews could not keep the law, Je. 11.10, but we keep the righteousness of the law if we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, Rom. 8 colon 1 dash 4. During this dispensation, the scriptures have concluded that both Jews and Gentiles are sinners, Rom. 3.23, so that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ, his righteousness, might be given to them that believe. Jesus had the perfect faith to live a perfect life, keep the law perfectly, and die a perfect death on the cross so those who have faith in him receive his righteousness. God can save a believer by his faith in the faith of Jesus. During the millennial kingdom, the Gentiles will have a thousand-year opportunity to be saved in large numbers, Rom. 11 colon 30 33. 23 But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. The law was in place for the interim until the faith of Christ should come. Before the Son carried out paying for man's sins with his blood mankind was hopelessly stuck, locked up under the law they could not keep, and were helpless in their sinful condition as part of Adam's family. We were kept under the schoolmaster, the law, until God's solution to man's sin problem was revealed. The schoolmaster constantly reminded us that we deserve to be punished for failing to live up to God's perfect standard, the Ten Commandments. The answer to our problem was for the Son of God to have the faith to die in our place so we can receive the gift of His righteousness, Rom. 517, put to our account when we believe, 1 Cor. 15 colon 1 dash 4, 2 Cor. 521, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written the just shall live by faith, Rom. 117, from the faith of Christ to our faith in Him. The Son of God accomplished man's salvation on his own and did not require anything from man. Salvation is 100% God and 0% man. 24 Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The purpose of the law is to show people their failure of being able to keep it and bring us to Christ, so we may be justified by faith. The law is like a schoolmaster that teaches our need for a savior. The schoolmaster says, sorry, you failed again, you don't measure up to God's perfect standard, you fall short, you will never measure up, your own righteousness is not really righteous, you fail to keep the law. We cannot keep the law because we have inherited the sin nature from Adam, Rom. 5.12, we inherited the knowledge of good and evil from him. Even our good is bad, Rom. 7.18, the good vegetables that Cain offered to God were rejected because God asked for a blood sacrifice and faith does what God said. We had no hope of eternal life because God will not accept our evil or our human good. The law energizes our sinful flesh and makes it worse, Rom. 7 9, the law showed us our need for a redeemer to fulfill the law and be the perfect sacrifice in our place and we need his spirit, his imputed righteousness. The schoolmaster brought us to trust in the faith of Jesus, his redemptive work at Calvary. We are justified by our faith in Christ's faith, 2 16, 25, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. But after we have his son's imputed righteousness, we are no longer under the schoolmaster, law. We do not need to try to live righteous by keeping the law that we cannot keep even now that we have his spirit. This is the point that Paul wants the Galatians to understand, the law doesn't save us or sanctify us. We received his spirit by faith and we live by faith in his instructions to us, not by keeping the law. Paul said that righteousness by the law of Moses is done away and abolished in Christ, and that his spirit exceeds in glory, 2 Cor. 3 colon 7 dash 18, after salvation, we are no longer under the schoolmaster and treated as children, but become sons, 4 colon 6. A son voluntarily does what he had to be taught by discipline when he was a child out of love for the father. 
If the son disobeys, it is no longer an issue between the child and the tutor, but between the child and his father. 26 For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 27 For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 28 There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus, for you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized have put on Christ, received his spirit, his life, his righteousness. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, one core. 12 13 Joined to him, one core. 6 17 It is a dry baptism or spiritual identification, Rom. 6 colon 3 4 F For colon 5 Paul reminds the Galatians that in the dispensation of grace, the middle wall of partition is down and that we are all spiritually one in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, we are neither Jew nor Greek, Gentile, slave or free, male or female, we are all one in Christ. We all have the same spirit, His. Our position is complete in Him, Colossians 2 verse 10, dot. 29 And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. If we belong to Christ, then we are Abraham's spiritual seed, because Christ was Abraham's seed, and the seed promised in Genesis 3 verse 15. We are heirs of the promised spirit. Abraham was willing to offer Isaac to show God he loved him more than his son, and Isaac was willing to die knowing God would resurrect him. But God spared Abraham's son. A blood payment was needed for Adam's sin, but God would not spare his own son, Rom. 832, the father said, I love you, son. And his brave, valiant, son said, I know dad, there is no other way to save them. I will go to the cruel cross so you can give them my righteousness, my spirit, my life, my heart. The law will help them understand that with Adam's sin nature in them, they need to believe what I have done for them. And when they believe then you, father, can declare them justified, forgiven, and pardoned of all their sin. Then they can live by faith with hearts of love and gratitude and serve as sons in our family. The love story is that God provided himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Jesus said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. John 8 verse 56.